So I've been asking myself a very difficult question recently. Why do I keep attracting narcissists into my life? Why do I keep falling for self-centered women? Why do I keep falling for manipulators? Why is this pattern happening, right? And it's a lot of people will talk about how it all goes back to childhood, like, you know, uh, unpacking this this 12 year nightmare that I've been stuck in that I'm recently getting out of now um, with my therapist. He's kind of bringing me back to the past and we're like addressing a lot of things that I've been through with mom and dad, um, with my first girlfriend in kindergarten. Um, and I think that the, the really hard pill to swallow with why, why we may be attracting narcissists regularly or why it seems like everyone that we just fall for so hard are just more so, even if it's covert, even if it's not so obvious, more so about themselves than about you and what you're giving. Um, is because people like us, we get something out of that. We kind of get off on that. We are being uh, um, reaffirmed that our trauma is real and our trauma is correct. And the trauma that I'm speaking to is the trauma of unworthiness, the trauma of there's something wrong with me, the trauma of we're not good enough. And as much as we logically don't want to be with someone that doesn't return our love, that doesn't uh, 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 appreciate us for who we really are, uh, and doesn't meet us where, uh, with the same level that of love that we're able to give, as much as we logically don't want that, our, somewhere deep in our history, we were conditioned to understand that as love and understand that that we are not good enough you know i um going back into my own history uh i grew up with a very narcissistic father that was very controlling and because of the abuse uh while i was living with my mom i tried to distance myself as much as possible from my dad so obviously when my father won custody, it, it was a living nightmare for me because he held a grudge against a 10 year old and he uh, played favorites between me and my brother. And you know, that obviously created some trauma uh, for my brother as well because my brother being an Aquarius really values independence, really values um, making his own decisions and finding his own way. And so having this like controlling narcissistic Virgo, just like breathing down his neck like a helicopter parent created so much trauma for my brother that, that he still has to live with. Just like I have to live with the trauma of never being good enough for my father, never being able to make up for uh, 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 the trauma that as a little child I created by distancing myself from him, by trash talking him, by taking my mother's side 100% of the time over my father's side. Um, but something even deeper than my own relationship to my father is my father's way of, of loving. Last Christmas, we were over at my aunt and uncle's and my father was getting presents and my father really didn't want these gifts. And the reason why he didn't want these gifts, so much so that he was willing to sabotage them by being rude and, and spoiling the surprise publicly and saying out loud that like he doesn't want these, is he feels like love is an equal exchange. And if he can't meet the kind of love that's being shown to him, then he doesn't want it because he doesn't feel like he's earned it. He doesn't feel in a similar way like how we do feel, like how I feel, like 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 we need to earn love in order to feel it. What kind of bullshit is that? Absolutely not okay at all. Um, we're all worthy of love. 
because we can love and the love that we have uh, uh, alone is enough. That's it. We don't need these external people to, to, to validate our love, especially the people that don't return it, that make us work for it, that make us feel like, oh, if they do return our love, then that means we're really someone special, right? That means we really did something right. Oh, I won this person over because um, for years uh, they uh, chose somebody else and they wanted to, 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 to live uh, in denial of their own love for me, but secretly they loved me and really my love was enough, but fear kept us apart, you know, and, and all these different um, checkpoints throughout my life where I would check in with this person. Uh, uh, she would reaffirm my love, uh, although I was always starving for her love. Those few moments where she reaffirmed my love or said, you know, like, you're not wrong about me. Um, if timing wasn't so cruel, then we definitely would be together. Um, I always feel so seen by you. Uh, like, even more uh, 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 recently being reaffirmed just a few months ago. And the funny thing, too, is that walking through conversations like this, you know, like where... Uh, uh, like, I'm, I'm told by this person that I'm completely starved of in my life, that I loved so much, that I poured 12 years of myself into, uh, that, that you know, I, I'm so wise and I'm so kind and, and I have so much to offer the world just by being myself. To then just be, like, like smacked out of their life, which happened more than once, when I just wanted to be a friend... When, while she was in a relationship, I always respected the boundaries, even though I'm culpable in this scenario. I was helping her emotionally cheat on her then boyfriend. And the sad thing, this is a repeating pattern. This might be the longest and most tragic and just not okay situation, but... I also have a, 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 another friend that I fell for that was married that, oh, they're married. Well, we could just be friends, but because the connection feels so real and there's obviously an attraction there, uh, emotions got involved and being as close as we were was just like this other situation. I'm helping to emotionally cheat, even though in both scenarios, I've been in situations where both of these women were in my bedroom, sitting on my bed, alone. Like, if they were so in love and so loyal to the love that they had, why would they then put themselves in situations like that? In fact, one of them I found out uh, was... Uh, um, had cheated on, on their husband multiple times. So I was just another name, another number to them. And maybe I was just another name and a number number to both of them. So it's, it's, it's something that I'm still unpacking for myself. Why is, is, is the star-crossed lover syndrome, why is that something that's so appealing to me? And to go back into my own history again, how my father loves. My father only accepts love the way that he thinks love is. And any other type of love, he doesn't feel like love to him. And confronting my father last Christmas on that, I felt that deep within my own biology. Love that comes easy to me, I don't feel on the same level as these tragic star-crossed lovers, the, these, these, these horrible, starved loves, these one-sided narcissistic scenarios. And the, the hard pill to swallow with all of this, too, is that people like us, the empaths, the reason why we crave those people is not just because of our history, but because in a weird way, we're also manipulators. 
we are giving, even if it is unconditional, because I expressed all I ever wanted to do was just express my love unconditionally. Yet here I am, sitting here hurt, feeling unworthy, right? If it's unconditional, then there shouldn't be that feeling of unworthiness. It should just be like, oh, you don't want to receive it? That's fine. Who cares? Of course I care. Because I really cared about this person, and I was hoping to receive that same type of love. Whether it was romantic or not, I still wanted to emotionally have my needs met by this person, by these people. And not being able to get it from them so readily excited me. Not being able to be with my twin flame or the love of my life, whatever it is, uh, uh, right off the bat meant that I had to prove myself. And I'm a life path four. I'm a Capricorn. I'm a workaholic. I love proving myself. I love working hard. I love throwing the entirety of my being into something. And if I have to do that before I can receive something, then that means the, re the, the, the reward of receiving that thing is going to feel like ecstasy. But all of this shows me how wrong that is. And how that's not how love should be. Love should, you are love. Like what Ram Dass says, like what if we just cultivate a level of mindfulness where we, we sink deeper into the place where we are love. We are the love that we're seeking. Like yesterday, uh, even though my heart's not uh, open and healed enough to actually be dating right now, I did a speed dating thing where I'm just like, okay, I'm going to meet people and have great conversations and just, you know, maybe make new friends. And boy, that felt incredible. I had incredible conversations and everyone's so different. And I was just so fully present for that. Why did I ever think I needed to kill myself, almost literally, kill myself in order to attain a love that was really coming from me the whole time. Because the love that I was in love with that was emanating from these, these, these narcissists, right? Was really the love that I was giving to them. And whenever they would reflect that back to me because my love is so intense and my love is so big, I'd be like, wow, this is amazing. This is so cool. This is so juicy. Like, like a big stack of like, like, like homemade pancakes or something, right? Something that I don't get to eat all the time. So it's like a treat. That's what love from a narcissism is like. It's like a treat. Breadcrumbs. I believe uh, uh, Aaron Dowdy actually uh, made a video on, on, you know, narcissistic patterns, why we fall for them and stuff like that as well. And I love that he referred to the, the love of a narcissism being breadcrumbs. And because it's just so small and so sparse and so rare that when we do get it, like a starving child that's not allowed to, to, to eat whenever they want and has to sneak food just, just to, to feel nourished. And that's another thing too, is that what great symbolism for, for not, like wanting to be nourished and being malnourished by the love of someone that is clearly doing this on purpose to keep you on a leash. I love strong, domineering women. I love women that really don't need me. But in doing that, I attract uh, uh, the toxic shadow side of, of strong, independent women, which is women that want to keep you on a leash, that want to keep me as their side piece or as their backup boyfriend. I'm not anyone's backup boyfriend. I'm... If I'm going to be anyone's choice, I'm their fucking first choice. I am not anyone's second choice. I know what I'm worth. And I don't need you or anyone else to tell me what my worth is. Because I know what my worth is. I lived through my mom dying, child abuse, sexual trauma, all this loss. And now this, after 12 years. You have no power over me. Your false light can't reach me anymore. I know my own self-worth, and it's more than you ever, ever could give me. And the truth is, 
we all deserve the love that we keep seeking because it's the love that we're giving. And it's not narcissistic or self-centered to say that we need to reclaim that love and give it back to ourselves. How are we ever supposed to love another person if we can't love ourselves? Especially if the love that we're seeking is the kind of love that only gets returned to us if we earn it. You are worthy of love. I am worthy of love. And we deserve better than to be strung along, than to be someone's second choice. The fact that I ever even considered saving my mother's ring for this person, what a disrespectful thing to do to my mother's memory. I'm so glad that this happened. What a dodged bullet, really. And the funny thing is that it's, it's not just this singular bullet I'm talking about. It's like Neo from the Matrix dodging all these bullets. That's me, basically. And the funny thing is, a lot of you watching this video right now, that's you too. This isn't your first rodeo. You've dodged so many bullets. Some of them you caught. Some of them were even strays that you caught from other people. We have bullet holes in us. And those bullet holes, as painful as they are, they're supposed to be there. They're reminders of what not to go after and what to avoid. Never again will I ever give my love in a one-sided nightmare. And never again should you either. You're worth more than that. And so am I. So thank you for listening. And I hope you have a good day.